Hello, friends. Robert Bevan here, author of the Caverns and Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels and short stories. With me is Sam West, and today is... What is it, Sam? Boardwalk Wednesday. Boardwalk 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 Wednesday. Wednesday. I don't know, some kind of metal intro. We got, we'll have, I'll, we'll pay an editor, and they'll give us great, like, Warlock Wednesday lighting coming out in the front of the screen, right? Well, no, because oh, okay. we've already finished the vast majority of these. That's a good point. We may have missed the window for that. There's yeah. only, like, five left. Four, I think. Well, I mean, including this one, there's five, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, And today, uh, the invocation we will be covering is uh, Undying Servitude. (gasps) Have dinner, my leash, but I'm dead. Um... (laughs) This is what you cast Animate Dead for? Sure! Uh, Why not? They're servants, they're animated. So, uh, this is honestly all it really takes to take all of the really bad... Like, once per long rest, you can cast this using a Warlock spell slot, invocations, and make them not suck. And when I say not suck, I mean, like, not be the most atrocious thing you could pick. This does it right, and it does it in a way that people kind of really wanted. So this is really simple. It requires 5th level, uh, from Toshkov and everything. You can cast Animate Dead without using a spell slot. Once you do so, you can't again in this way till you finish a long rest. And that's it. It doesn't let you cast with Warlock spells, it, or spell slots. It just gives you the one animate dead per long rest, which is really meaningful because that spell is honestly more of a feature than it is a spell anyway. Um, animate dead lets you you raise a thing that's under your control for 24 hours, and then it goes berserk and tries to kill everyone around you unless you cast the spell again. And a really important note is that you can when you can recast the spell, you can maintain control on up to four of these things. So, hypothetically, you can slowly accumulate them if you can get enough long rests in to get the refresh on Animate Dead to happen more than once a day. Which is a little bit finicky, and it's not going to work at every single table the exact way you want it, especially whenever you're like doing adventuring, but in downtime you'll often find ways to slowly build up two, three, maybe even four undead under your control at once. But it's pretty neat. Yeah. Um. This, I mean, this invocation, I feel <clears throat> do you agree that it, uh, it's better if you already have Animate Dead as a spell? Uh, Animate Dead isn't even a Warlock spell. If you no, are... but I mean, like, I'm talking multi-classing. Like, you want to be the the Necromancer character. You want to you want to raise an army of undead. So having multiple of them, of the, the spells, would be beneficial in that regard. Uh, I'll give you a technically yes. However, um, if you can cast Animate Dead using Warlock spell slots, you're already doing profoundly busted things. Um, because there's a reason why it's not on the Warlock spell list, and there's a reason why this invocation exists in this fashion, because as it turns out, Pack Magic is not a fair ability on full casters, because Pack Magic lets you take spells that aren't necessarily meant to happen a lot at once and do them twice an hour. So mm-hmm. with Anime Dead, as opposed to having a twice per eight hours, you can do it 16 times per eight hours and very quickly have a gigantic army under your disposal. Now, is it actually uses that for a 17 zombie that relevant? Eh, not really. But if you ever get downtime and have a cemetery, often you can do some cheesy cool things like an 11th level necromancer with five levels in warlock, normally undying or undead, page right, and then you're like, yeah, I've, I've got a gigantic legion under my control. What of it? Uh, which is pretty freaking sweet. All right. Well, I wasn't talking about having it as, as a warlock spell. I, I was talking about Having it here as an invocation and multi-classing into a, a you know a class that gets animated dead on their list. Yeah, and that's that's the juice that lets you cast it using warlock spell slots. Oh, does it? I didn't know that. Sure does. Okay, that's fun. That's right. the coffee lock way. Okay, then uh, then yes, that I can see why this becomes a lot less valuable there. Yeah, it's definitely meant for fair warlock. Playing an undead, undying warlock that wants to do the you have a couple undead servants up to four, normally one or two. Um, and it's pretty good in that instance. The spell is honestly just great. You normally it's always best to take skeletons because they can use short bows, and then you have a little battalion around you that give you some extra attacks for free every round. That for an invocation is great. Having a little servant that you can run in just indiscriminately to get killed is really useful. You just have fodder, send fodder into trap before you die, and if the skeleton gets crushed a little bit, oh well, you'll get a new skeleton next long rest, right? Like it's it's a great little tool to have that you'll have even less empathy for than you'll have for your familiar. I do really horrendously despicable things to my familiars. They've gotten squished, exploded, <laughs> and ripped to shreds for the sake of me knowing what's down that dark, shady corridor. But they always come back, and they're, you know, maybe bitter, but they do their job. Yeah, for me, it's horses. Sure. We all have our D&D fodder. Yeah. <laughs> 
I uh, I like this yeah. little invocation. I don't think it's the most powerful thing in the world, but I do think if you are really any warlock that is remotely evil, it's so easy to pick this up as a fifth level invocation. Mainly after you've taken, like, you you might be like, get to fifth level, take your extra attack or take your agonizing blast if you don't already have it. And then this switches in for one of your uh, other invocations that you got earlier, like a beast speech or something, if you wanted to get an upgrade. This is a pretty big upgrade on a lot of character sheets. So it'll take a lot of utility stuff and be like, this is probably better than those. Um, and that's going to be great little power budget. That's going to be great in and out of combat. So that's a real thing to consider whenever you're doing those kinds of builds at fifth level, taking like Thirsting Blade. And then also grab the Undying Servitude for an older one, because you can do that. Um, yeah, I mean, that's... Not a whole lot else to talk about. Just uh, you know, there's Animate Dead. I mean, this this gives you Animate Dead. So uh, we have a great video on that. You should go watch yeah. our Animate Dead video. We go very in depth. That's why yeah. it's almost always better to use skeletons. It's the big thing. Uh, and also the uh, building an insane army. <laughs> the logistical number crunch that is Animate Dead. I will also say to this to this thing's credit, if you were put off by Animate Dead because of the bookkeeping, this literally has so much less bookkeeping. You only get one. So you, normally you just have a zombie or a skeleton walking around with you. And if that's kind of what you want out of Animate Dead, this is a really great route to go to get that. If you don't want to build your own <laughs> Undead Apocalypse, yeah, this is a great way to get there. But you still get a little, little bit of flavor of, you know, being an evil lich. All right, this uh, this is gated at fifth level. So you, uh, does it matter there? It's an extra body if it level. It's fine. Yeah. Like, again, I that's why I mentioned earlier, like, you'll often be taking Thirsting Blade here, or you'll be taking, like, you, you if you already have Agonizing Blast, then that's less of an issue. But of the two builds, right, with Agonizing Blasters or Thirsting Bladers, Thirsting Blade means you'll, if you want this too, you just have to swap out another invocation that you got earlier for it, which isn't the end of the world. But it does mean your build's going to be a little bit more linear. I can definitely see there being Hex Blades that just want to go wading into battle with an army of zombies around them, though, because that sounds metal, as, metal AF. So, like, <laughs> you know... Grab your big, angry, I eat souls sword. Grab a posse of undead that you personally slayed and then run at people. They'll be running a lot slower than you will because zombies suck. But, you know, you can still chop little pieces while they get there. All right. And then you've got more fodder for zombies. They'll take some hits for you. It'll be fine. All right. Well, guess... Just pick skeletons and have them rain errors. Just... Yeah. Um, I guess that's all we've got to say. You want to you wanna rate this one? I think it's pretty solid. I, I'd give this a four. I think that it's genuinely a big improvement to your character. Animate Dead is a baller spell. It's a five out of five spell, but this restrains it a lot. This takes it out of the superpower gamey stuff. If you're getting un if you're getting Animate Dead this way in Warlock, I'm way more relieved than if you're multiclassing for that. So like, it's <laughs> not bringing the game in half, but it is a genuinely big upgrade for a fifth level character. It doesn't scale that well, but like at fifth, sixth, seventh level, it was gonna feel great. I don't know if it will feel great. I feel okay. I mean, but, uh, extra tax around is really good. Yeah. You know, is it for good? I think so. All right. It's like, um, what if you stapled a summon spell just for free? That's what this is. A non-concentration summon That's true, summon because you spell. can, you know, this doesn't cost concentration, so you can still do this and a summon spell. So That's fun. All right. Yeah, right. you talked me up to a four. This is how you get your own little like posse of six critters. Like you take you take uh, undying servitude, you go pack to the chain, you have uh, your shadow spawn up, and you're just like running around as your own party playing your own Dungeons and Dragons with everyone else. Because why does why does Sam have four things under his control right now? I thought he was a warlock. What's happening? He's level six. All right, you fun. did it. Yeah, sounds good. All right, um, that was undying servitude. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Let us know what you think down in the comments below, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching. If you found this helpful, informative, or entertaining, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button below. You needn't smash it. A gentle tap will suffice. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel. And make sure you check out the links in the description where you'll find my Caverns and Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels, Sam's full review of the spell, and other fun things.